Nice topic is called the characteristics of a simp. Okay, so we're gonna open up uh, the first characteristics of a simp. Um, there's an acronym that I came up with so that um, I may be in rude speech, but not in knowledge as it is written. So the character, the first characteristics of a simp is CTDS, CTDS. Okay, CTDS, that's the first acronym. That's the first characteristics of a simp, CTDS, which means chronic thigh dependency syndrome. Chronic thigh dependency syndrome. Write that down. Okay, the characteristics of a simp. The first characteristics of a simp is chronic thigh, meaning as in thigh, T-H-I-G-H. Chronic thigh dependency syndrome. We're gonna deal with the first characteristics of a simp, how to identify a simp, okay? Give me the book of Numbers, chapter five, verse 21. Give me Numbers 5, 21, let's start there. Numbers chapter 5, verse 21. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 5, verse 21. Come on. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. Mm. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people. Come on. And when thou shalt make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. When the when the pre, when the Lord does what? When the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot mm -hmm. and thy belly to swell. So now, just to catch everyone up that has not read this chapter, this chapter goes into a, a man that is suspecting his wife of um, of having committed adultery. The wife is suspecting that a wife is defiled by another man. You understand? So the spirit of jealousy has jumped on him. So now he goes to the priest, the Levites, to inquire of this thing. So he can discover whether this woman has jumped out of the marriage, you understand, to do some evil stuff, okay, commit adultery. So that's what we're going over here. So at this point, now they have gone to the priest to inquire, and the priest, they've come up with a way to determine a litmus test to find out what really, what, 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 whether this woman has committed adultery or not. Okay, read verse 21 again. The book of Numbers, chapter 5, verse 21. And the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people. When the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. So now this thigh right here, keep reading. He says, The Lord will make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. If it's found out that you actually went outside your remarriage. And your husband is right. Read on. And this water that causeth the curse shall go into thy bowels mm -hmm. to make thy belly to swell. Read. And thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. So now you see that thing? So the priest will give the woman water. And this water, when she drinks it, it will go into her stomach and it will make thy belly, her belly to swell and her thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. Meaning, I agree. I agree to take the water so that we can see whether my husband is right or not. Okay? So now it says it's going to make your thigh to rot and your belly to swell. So we need to understand what is the Bible what is the Bible talking about when it says it will make your thigh to rot? Watch this. Give me the book of Judith chapter 9. Judith chapter 9 verse 2. Watch. This. Judith chapter 9 verse 2. O Lord God of my father Simeon to whom thou gavest a sword to take vengeance of the strangers. Let's talk about the Canaanites. This goes into the Canaanites. Okay, the strangers is making reference to the Canaanites. Read on. Who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her. Who did what? Who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her. So the maid here is, is talking about our, 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 our sister Dina. Our sister Dina, Jacob's daughter. Okay. It says, who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her because they raped that boy, that Hamite boy raped our sister Dina. 
That's what uh, our foremother Judith is rehearsing. She is rehearsing the history in the book of Genesis. So it's a, who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her? Because what is a girdle? A girdle is a belt. So it's designed to what? The belt is making that because when you loosen the belt on a woman, what is the belt used for? To hold the dress, the skirt, you understand? When the, when the girdle is loosened, that, what, what, that's a metaphor that, guess what? Her dress was taken off. That's what that means. Go ahead. And discover the thigh to her shame. You see that thing? So when she, when he loosened the girdle of, of, her, form, of, her, of her sister, Dina, to defile her, I mean, to rape her, he says what? And discovered the thigh to her shame. The thigh he is making, refer is making reference to the BJJ. That's what this is. The thigh is not actually talking about the actual thigh. Okay, read that part again. Judith chapter 9, verse 2. Read. The God of my father Simeon, to whom thou gavest the sword to take vengeance of the strangers, who loosened the girdle of her maid to defile her. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, Judith chapter 9, verse 2. O Lord God of my father Simeon, to whom thou gavest the sword to take vengeance of the strangers, who loosened the girdle of her maid to defile her, and discovered the thigh to her shame. Read. Really? and polluted her virginity to her reproach. You see that thing? So now he's telling you what the thigh actually is. He says, um, discovered the thigh to her shame and polluted her virginity to her reproach. So he's letting you know the thigh is not making reference to the actual thigh. Read on. For thou sayest, it shall not be so. And yet they did so. Meaning what? Because they went to revenge. Simeon and Levi, they went to revenge that Canaanite, you understand what they did to our, uh, to our sister Dina. So now, what we want to understand, well, the reason why we are coming here is to understand what, is the, what, what, what the thigh is. The thigh is talking about a woman's vagina. That's what this is talking about, okay? So now, go back to the book of Numbers. Go back to the book of Numbers, 25 is 21 and 22 again. Numbers 5 is 21. Numbers chapter 5 is 21. Mm -hmm. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. Really? And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people, when the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot uh -huh. and thy belly to swell. Will make thy thigh to roll, meaning your vagina to rot and thy belly to swell. That's why you see today um, our sisters, they've got women issues down there and all of that, those that have been around the block. You understand? And those that commit abortions and all that because they would go out, commit adultery, fall pregnant, and guess what they would do? They would commit abortions. So when it says, and thy belly to swell, you ever see these women? Their sister is like, they just have a stomach. It doesn't go, it doesn't matter how many gyms they go to, how many stomach exercises they do, but the stomach is still right there. It doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. That's what we're reading here because they've been around the block. You understand? They are opening their quiver to every arrow. That's why the stomach is big because abortions and all that and their thigh is rotten. Okay, read on. Verse 22. Come on. And this water shall cause the curse to go into thy bowels. Read. To make thy belly swell mm -hmm. and thy thigh to rot. Read. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. So now what we're reading here is going into what? The thigh. So let's go back to the topic now. The characteristics of a simp. Chronic thigh dependency syndrome. Now everybody know what that means, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody yes. knows what that means now? Oh, oh crazy, sir. <laughs> All praise to the most high. So the characteristics of a simp. A simp has a chronic dependency to a what? To the thigh. A simp has a chronic dependency to a woman's thigh. That is driving force. The driving force of a simp, the first characteristics of what? Of a simp. This is the motivating factor. The coochie, the thigh. You understand? He doesn't care whether the thigh is rotten or not. He doesn't want to find out. He doesn't care to find out. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Judith, chapter 16, verse 9. 
Judith chapter 16 and verse 9. You know what? Give me Proverbs 31. Mm. I think I'll go there first. Give me Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Mm -hmm. Favor is deceitful. Favor and is beauty deceitful. is vain. Come on. Favor is deceitful and beauty is what? And beauty is vain. And beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. Because guess what? A simp, that is, the, that is the, his only motivating factor, is beauty and the coochie. Beauty and coochie is the motivating factor of a simp. A simp is motivated by beauty and coochie. Okay? Read that again. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Mm -hmm. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Come on. But a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. But a woman that she feareth the Lord, praised. but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. A simp doesn't check whether this woman fears the Lord or not. A simp is only, a simp is only interested in what? In beauty and coochie. That's the motivating factor of a simp. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Judith 16 verse 9. Judith chapter 16 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Her what? Her beauty. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Now stop right there. When it says her sandals ravished his eyes. So does that mean he was ravished by her sandals? No, 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 no. No, no. It says her sandals ravished his eyes. So that means what is this talking about? He's not talking about his shoes. No. He's talking about a feet, meaning this brother right here, this simp, he's got what? He's got a feet fetish. They are the ones that will do what? They will be licking a woman's toes and all that. The hell is this? Yeah, they'll be doing that. That's the simp. They'll be licking a woman's toes. Women don't be washing her feet and all that. She don't soak them up. You understand? She doesn't soak in that bath for hours. He'd be talking about just lick my feet. No, no. Mm -mm. Read that part again. Judith chapter 16, verse 9. Read. Her sandals ravished his feet. Her sandals. Yes. So her sandals ravished his feet because he's got a foot fetish and he doesn't mind licking a woman's feet. Meaning what? He's a bootlick. Okay, come on. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Mm -hmm. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. You see that thing? That's some heavy stuff right there. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. Because guess what? We read in Proverbs 31. It says, beauty is vain, but a simp doesn't care about whether the woman has good works or not. Mm -mm. Because his motivating factor is what? Is beauty and coochie. He will do anything and everything to get to the coochie. Because the beauty of this woman is keeping his mind prisoner. Now he's imprisoned by this woman. So in other words, what does he do? He's worshipping the woman. These are characteristics of simps. A simp worships the woman. You understand? A simp is motivated by coochie and beauty. Read it again. Judith chapter 16, verse 9. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Mm -hmm. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. Read. And the, and the fortune passed through his neck. And the fortune passed through his neck. So now you need to understand. Remember, fortune is a sword. So he, the, the simp doesn't look at the red flags. He's blinded by these red, by, by, by the coochie and the beauty. The beauty and the coochie is what? It clouds a simp's judgment. A simp is not going to pick up red flags. Mm, that sister right there, that sister is a demon. No, no, he see the red flags, he will ignore them. A simp will see the red flags and say, nah, that's nothing here. Yeah, I can fix it. That's a simp. Okay? The simp has a hero complex. That's a simp. Read again, verse 9. Judith chapter 16, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. Read. And the fortune Read. passed through his neck. And a fortune passed through his neck. So he don't, he don't see the dangers. Everything is all okay in white Jesus. But my point is, the motivating characteristics of a simp, one of those, one of that characteristics is what? Coochie beauty. Everything that a simp does is what? Beauty, coochie. Beauty and coochie. You understand? 
beauty, coochie, and attention. That's what a simp loves. That's one of the dominant factors of a simp. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus 26, verse 10. Sirach 26 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 10. Mm -hmm. If thy daughter be shameless, Rich. keep her in straightly, mm -hmm. lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. So now this, a simp, a simp loves these shameless women. Because guess what? He's not going to see that this is a shameless woman. Because the only thing that is on his mind is coochie above all. Then the beauty, you understand? And to worship both. The beauty of that woman and the coochie of that woman. That's the simp. Read on. Jump down to verse 12 now. Verse 12. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he hath found a fountain. Read. And drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. And open her thigh against every penis. Now, a simp doesn't investigate those things because the, 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 bl the blinders that he's got on his left and on his right is what? Beauty and coochie. So now, once he fixates his mind on a woman, everything else falls away. He doesn't care about anything else. He doesn't care about everything else or everyone else. His mind is fully focused on the coochie and the beauty of this woman. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 3 verse 12. Isaiah. Chapter 3, verse 12. Okay. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Mm -hmm. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. So now, one of the things that you need to understand is that a simp, his motivating factor is what? Coochie and beauty. And where, where, where is, what is the psychology behind the behavior and character of a simp? Is that a simp is raised by his mother. A simp, a simp is raised by his mother. Even if the father is there, but the mother, the, but the, the opinion of the mother holds, holds, it, it destroys everything. It doesn't matter what the father tells him, you're not going to hear nothing. But when the mother speaks, he pays attention. That's a simp. You understand? He worships the ground that the woman walks on. But he's not going to show it. You understand? But the key, the, 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 the key identif the, the identifying factors of a simp is that they are raised by their mothers. And whatever the woman says, listen, they take it to heart. When the father says something, he sees it as, no, your, my, your, your father is like, no, your father, mm, yeah, no, he's really great getting in the way. Whatever the father says, he's not going to do it. But let the woman says it, he will jump up and do it. That's a simp. Okay? He only responds to the woman. Read that again, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Read. As for my people, children are the oppressors, mm -hmm. and women rule over them. Read. Oh, my people. They which leave thee, cause thee to err, mm -hmm. and destroy the way of thy paths. And destroy the way of thy path. So a simp is is a simp, a simp is a beta male. It's not an alpha male. A simp is a beta male. His job, he wants to submit to the woman. He worships the woman. What does he worship on that woman? He worships the beauty. He worships the ground she walks on, and he worships the coochie. He worship. He will do anything and everything to what, to put to put signs out there that really I worship you. I worship the coochie that is between your legs. I worship the beauty. You understand? I worship everything about you. You understand? You be hearing brothers be saying, "No, she's my life." Mm -hmm. That's a simp. She's everything to me. That's a simp right there. Okay, that's a simp. They will listen. A simp. Read it again. Verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. As for my people, children are the oppressors, and women rule over them. 
O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. You see that thing? So now, watch this. Give me the book of 2 Chronicles 22 verse 1. 2 Chronicles 22 verse 1. A simp, the character of a simp, which is what? To worship the coochie, the beauty of a woman. You understand? To, to belittle themselves so that the woman can be on top of him. That is because his mother was his counselor. His mother is the one that dictates every decision he makes. You understand? A simp is, go, is, is a brother that has, has mommy issues. They've got mommy issues. You understand? They seek attention. That's a simp. And guess what? They, that woman, yes, they worship the coochie and the beauty, but that woman is, the, is a mother to them. Second Chronicles 22 verse 1. Watch this. Second Chronicles 22 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his stead. Mm -hmm. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. So now Ahaziah now is the king, the son of Jehoram. Watch this. Read on. Verse 2. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, Athaliah. the daughter of... So Athaliah... Is, is, is Ahaziah's mother. Read on. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. Mm -hmm. Come on. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. You see that thing? So this is Ahab's lineage. You understand? Because a simp will breed more simps. Go ahead. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Read that part again. For his mother was what? For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. So his mother was his counselor. So he worships his he worshipped his mother. His mother was the one that was running the show. The mother was a goddess to him. You understand? And the mother made sure that he raised him up like that. That was the program. The program of Willie Lynch. The program of Willie Lynch is that the women were taught to do what. When if they've got boys, they must raise the boys to be effeminate. If they've got girls, they must raise the girls to be independent and superior to the what? To the males. You understand? So they raise the boys to be beta males and they raise the girls to be alpha females. So what we're reading here, that's exactly what Willie Lynch did. Read that part again, verse 3. It's in Chronicles chapter 22, verse 3. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, mm -hmm. for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Now, Ahaziah, his mother was the one that was running the show, right? Watch this. Now, we went over this before. His mother was his counselor to do wickedly, so his mother was running the show. His, his mother was the head, okay? Watch, although he was the king, his mother was the head. So now you have a woman... That is, that is uh, controlling this boy, his son. Now, guess what? When that boy grows up to be a quote-unquote man, he breeds somebody like this. Give me that in 1 Kings 21. 1 Kings 21 and verse 25. We're just going to get to the point. 1 Kings 21 verse 25. Watch this. 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 25. Mm -hmm. But there was none like unto a unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Read that again. First Kings, chapter 21, verse 25. Mm -hmm. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. He says, you see what he says? He says, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. He sold himself. Hmm, what does that mean? Hold this. Give me Sarah 10. Give me Ecclesiasticus chapter 10. I'm going to show you the characteristics of a simp. Because he's, he's motivated by coochie and beauty and to worship the woman, 
Watch this. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 9. Let's start there. Sirach 10 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Come on. For such an one seteth set his own soul to sail. Mm -hmm. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. Now let's read verse 9 one more again. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Why is earth and ashes proud? Stop right there. He says, why is earth and ashes proud? Why is earth and ashes proud? What does that mean, earth and ashes? Give me Sirach 17, 32. We're coming back here. Let's understand what it means when it says ash, earth and ashes. Earth and ashes making reference to man. Okay, give me that. Sirach 17, 32. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 32. He viewed the power of the height of heaven. Mm -hmm. And all men are but earth and ashes. What did he say? And all men are but earth and, and ashes. And all, it says all men are but earth and ashes. So go back to where he was at. Sirach 10 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Why is earth and ashes proud? Why is man proud? Why is man proud? Go ahead. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Because a simp is a covetous brother. A simp is a covetous man. Because to covet means to you go against the laws of God to get the coochie because you are driven by it. And the beauty of that, that, the beauty of that hole is keeping you prisoner. Hmm. Because the, the beauty of the hole is keeping you prisoner, guess what? You're going to go outside of God's commandments to do what? Read the next part of this verse. Go ahead. For such, for such an one setteth his own soul to save. You see that thing? It says, for such an one. This covetous man, you understand? He says he's going to set his own soul to sail. Meaning what? He's going to sell himself. The Lord is going to tell you how he's going to do it. Go ahead. Because while he liveth, he mm -hmm. casteth away his bowels. He does what? He casteth away his bowels. He says, while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. What does that mean? The Lord is saying, as simp, because he's motivated by coochie and beauty, guess what he's going to do? That brother, guess what he will do? He will sell his own bowels, meaning what? He will sell his own bum to do it. He will sell his own behind to do it. You understand? These are the, these are the type of brothers that will go as far as what? When the woman is gone, this woman that he worships, the woman that he, because he worships the coochie, you understand? He worships the coochie and the beauty of this woman. When the woman leaves the house, guess what the simp does? The simp does. The simp will be wearing that woman's panties. The simp will be wearing that woman's bras. And I'm not talking literally, or, mm -mm, I'm not talking spiritual or figurative. Mm -mm. Physically, he will do it. When the sister is gone to work and all that, he'll be wearing the mini skirt that he, she wears. He'll be wearing the bra that he she wears. He'll be wearing the panties that she wears. You understand? You can't make this stuff up. That's a simp. All because he's motivated by what? Coochie. Coochie and beauty. All he wants is just to submit to this woman. He will sell his own bum to do it. That's what the Lord is saying, right? Read that again, verse 9, because that's what Ahab was doing. Because of what? Because the mother raised this boy, this boy up. So the mother was a God in his life. You understand? So he worships the mother because the mother raised him to worship her. Now when he's a, he's a quote-unquote man, guess what? He's going to look for what? He's going to look for a woman that is exactly like his mother. Okay? Read that again, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 9. Read. Why is earth and ashes proud? Mm -hmm. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such an one setteth his own soul to sail. Read. Because Read. while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. While he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. Go back to First Kings now. First Kings chapter 21, verse 25. One more again. 
It was Kings, chapter 21, verse 25. Mm-hmm. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. So how did he sell Jesus... himself? Hold on. How did he sell? He says, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. Meaning his woman, his wife, was what? Was fighting battles for him. Whatever he wanted to do, the wife was the one that did it. You understand? Because he couldn't do it. But in his mind, he thought he's running. No, no, no. He wasn't running the show. Jezebel was running the show. So we men that are brothers that are raised by their mothers and the father's opinion and the father's guidance hell holds no holds no weight in his mind. That's a simp. He worships his mother. His, he worships his mother. That's why a lot of the sims, you hear the scandals, they end up sleeping with their own mothers. Yeah, they do that. That's why Leviticus 18 is written. Don't sleep with your own mom. You understand? It's because simps, that's what they do. Simps, they worship their mothers. Simps sleep with their mothers. Simps, they, when they get married, the woman is the man, he is the woman. That's a simp. What is the motivating factor? The coochie. You understand? The coochie. He can, he can help himself. You understand? When the woman calls, he'll be jumping up. He can not he jump up. You understand? He'll be saying, brothers, I'll see you. Listen, mm -mm, let's, that, that's the coochie. Mm -hmm. The coochie is the one that's running the show. Read that thing again, verse 25. First Kings chapter 21, verse 25. Mm -hmm. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, Read. whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. You see that thing? Meaning he was not in control at all. He says, Who's, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So Jezebel was the one that was what? He was, she was the puppet master. He was the puppet. So anything and everything that Jezebel wanted to do, what Jezebel wanted Ahab to do, all that Jezebel had to do was just to say stuff, directly or indirectly. And Ahab will allow, will create opportunities for Jezebel to do her thing. You understand? That's a simp. Because what did, what did Ahab worship? Ahab worshipped the coochie. Ahab was controlled by the coochie. Every decision that Ahab made was, was what? Power to the coochie. You understand? The coochie and the coochie Jews. That's the only thing that was in his mind. Oh my God, oh my God. Read again, verse 25. 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, uh -huh. which did tell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stood up. Now, you need to really think about it. Remember what we read in Sirach 10, verse 9. It says, while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. He will sell his bum to do it. Now, literally, by the way. Now, here it says, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So, really think about it. Ahab is the king. Ahab, that means anything and everything that Jezebel wanted to do in the bedroom. Guess what? Ahab did it. Ahab did it. You, you see these, these shows. Um, there's a show, uh, Billions. There's a show on, I think it's on Netflix. I don't know if it's on Netflix. Called Billions. There's this guy, he's an attorney. And um, he's, he's got a wife. I think the wife is some kind of a therapist. And this, this, this guy, he's got some, some nasty fetishes, okay? He be just getting women from... Um, you know, these dominatrix, they call them dominatrix. What their job is to what? The, the, man be, be the man is in a subservient position to the woman when it comes to sex. Okay? So what happens is um, the woman will be punching him, in the, punching him in the face, beating him, uh, and they'll be having whips. The woman will be whipping him. The woman will be dressed like a man. He'll be dressed like a woman. You understand? So really, Ahab, he was like that. That's a simp. He will what? He says, he casted his own. He says, while he liveth, he casted away his bowels. That's what Ahab was doing. 
whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Jezebel didn't get to do nothing. Jezebel just say something, and it will be jumping up like a popcorn in a microwave. You understand? Ready to serve the goddess Jezebel. So a simp, he will do anything and everything because what's motivating the simp is what? If a woman gives a simp attention, guess what? That woman owns, owns that whole brother. That, that, that woman owns that man. He owns his mind. He owns his soul. He owns everything about him. Because he seeks, he's seeking attention. You understand? He's seeking attention. The way his mother raised him, you understand? Oh, little no, no. All of that. Guess what? When he gets married, he finds a woman. A woman gives him a... doesn't matter whether she's a hoe. She's a midget, doesn't matter what she is. Whether her thigh is rotten, he don't care. That's a simp. Motivated by coochie and beauty. And all he wants to do is submit to the woman. You understand? And if you as a brother, you admonish him, you correct him, he's going to see you as the devil. He's going to see you as the enemy. You see that thing? That's a simp. You understand? When it comes to coochie and beauty. Hmm. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of First Esdras, chapter four. We're still dealing with, we still, we, we, I'm, I'm still on topic. First Esdras four. Let's start at verse twenty-two. Watch this. I love this chapter because there's some things that are written in this book, in this chapter right here. Watch this. First Esdras four, verse twenty-two. Let's start there. First Esdras chapter four, verse twenty-two. Mm -hmm. By this also you must know that women have dominion over you. Stop right there. It says, by this also you must know that women have dominion over you. They have power over you. Because, guess what? Hmm, watch this. Let's stop here. Let's pause right here. Let's go to the book of Genesis. I want to show you. You know what? Give me wisdom of Solomon 10. Let's set, let's, let me set the scene. Okay, let me set the scene real quick. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10. Let's start at verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 1. Mm -hmm. She preserved the first form father of, of the world that was created alone mm -hmm. and brought him out of his fall. That's talking about Adam. You understand? The first form father of the world that was created alone and brought him out of his fall. Next verse. Watch this. And gave him power to rule all things. I need you to, to put some power in this thing, bro. Come on. Verse 2 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 2. And gave him power to rule all things. And gave him power to rule all things. So Adam was a god on earth. Let me say that again. Adam was a god on earth. He was given power and dominion to rule all things, everyone and everything. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Watch this. Genesis. Mm. No, no, not chapter 2. Genesis chapter 3. Ah, uh, My Bible is gone. Yeah. Just give me one second. Let me use this other one. I can't see nothing here. One second, brothers and sisters. Um, Genesis 2. Give me Genesis 2, verse 17. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. No, no. Was... No, no. Genesis 3. I'm sorry. Genesis 3, verse 17. Genesis chapter, chapter 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, mm. Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So now the Most High God is judging Adam now. The Mosa is judging Adam. Hold this. Give me a second Ezra chapter 7. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 11. Watch this. 
second is chapter 7 verse 11 read because for her sakes i no, made no. the world because for their sakes i need you to pronounce the right words here read that again second is chapter 7 verse 11 mm -hmm. because for their sakes i made the world read and when adam transgressed my statutes when adam did what and when adam transgressed my statutes when adam broke god's commandments come on read then was decreed that now is done then was decreed that now is done what is the what was decreed the judgment the judgment is what we just read in genesis 3 verse 17 then was decreed that now is done meaning the judgment when he broke the commandments you understand the judgment came upon us so we the sons of adam guess what we suffer the consequences of what our forefather adam did now go back to genesis 3 17 now genesis chapter 3 verse 17 read and unto adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife because thou hast what because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife because thou has hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. When did Adam hearken to the voice of his wife? When Eve came with that idolatry. He listened. So, but you need to really ask yourself, say, okay, we just read in Wisdom of Solomon that he was given power to rule all things. So what would make Adam to submit to Eve? To submit to Eve? What was it? Hmm. Mm. The coaching. Very dangerous business, you see. Okay? He was given power to rule all things. But when Eve came with a doctrine, he folded. What would make him to fold? Because remember, Eve was no longer moving in the right spirit anymore. Eve was moving in the spirit of the devil. The devil comes with what? Seduc seduction. He was seduced. And guess what? The coochie had power over his thoughts. He wasn't thinking straight. Okay. Now, let's go to First Esdras. Go back to First Esdras now. Chapter 4, verse 22. First Esdras, chapter 4, verse 22. Read. Really? By this also you must know that women have dominion over you. Mm -hmm. Do you not labor and toil? And give and give and bring all to the women. You see that thing? Now that's a heavy verse right there. But this also, he says, but by this also you must know that women have dominion over you. Remember what was given. Adam, Adam was what? His job was to follow and listen to the voice of the most high. He decided, mm -mm, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna submit myself to this woman. The hell is this? You understand? He became a simp at that point. But what I want to show you here is, it says, by this also you must know that women have dominion over you. Do you not labor and toil now because of the dominion that the woman had over Adam at that point, because of, because of Adam listening to Eve when Eve was moving in the spirit of the devil? Because remember, Eve gave place to the devil and the devil seduced her. She seduced her husband. You understand? So now he said, but this also you must know that women have dominion over you. Do you not labor and toil? Are we not laboring now and toiling and bring all to the woman? The same woman that brought Adam to his knees. Hmm. You can make this stuff up. You see that part right there? Do you not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? Hold this. Hmm. Go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 7. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 11 again. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 11. Read. Because for their sakes I made the world. Mm -hmm. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Mm -hmm. Then Come were on. the entrances of this world made narrow. Stop right there. He says, then, then, because of the judgment that came down, it says, then were the entrances of this world made narrow. That's why now we have to labor to get everything. Go ahead. 
full of sorrow and travail full, full of sorrow and travail because of what because adam hearkened unto the voice of his wife because eve had dominion over him at that point read they are but few and evil mm -hmm. full of perils and very painful you see that thing and full of perils and very painful it's very painful now now we have to labor and not only that now we are the, the sons of aram which is us today you understand the simps you know what they are doing now the simps will labor and bring everything to the woman because why the woman now is their god you see that thing because the woman's god is esau okay watch this go back to where was that first Ezra 4 verse 22 again First is chapter 4, verse 22. Read. By this also you must know that women have dominion over you. Mm -hmm. Do ye not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? Read. Yea, a man thinketh, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and, and to steal, to sail upon the sea and upon rivers. So it says the man will take up his sword and go, he, he will go to steal, to rob, to sail upon the sea and upon the river. You, he, he will go through all the dangers. He doesn't care about his life. You understand? He will go through all the perils to rob, to steal, to, to sail upon seas and upon rivers. He is just, he's going across seas, all for the woman. So what would be the motivating factor behind this behavior? What's motivating him? Because in the truth, we know what's motivating us to go out there, the kingdom. So when you're in the world, what's motivating the black man? The coach is motivating the black man. You understand? But in the truth, you're still going to have simps that are motivated by coochie and beauty. You can't make this stuff up. Read again, verse 23. First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 23. Read. Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal, mm -hmm. to steal upon the sea and upon rivers. Ray. And looketh upon a lion, and goeth in the darkness, and when he hath stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. You see that thing? It says, he, that he can face a lion. Go in the darkness. When he hath, he hath stolen, spoiled, robbed, bringeth all to his love. What's motivating him? The coach is motivating him. You ever see these adventure movies, your Troy and all of that? When you investigate the plot, who's this at the center of the conflict? The woman. What about the woman that is at the center of the conflict? The coochie and her beauty. Okay, come on. Wherefore, a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. They will denounce their father and their mother because of the coochie and the beauty. Read. Yea, many they be that have run out of their wits for women. You see that thing? They have run out of their wits, meaning what? Now they are dumb. Because what's, that's what King Solomon was going over. So King Solomon, when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, that's exactly what his problem was. Let's read it real quick. I'm going to show you. It says, yea, many have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay, chapter 40. Give me Sarah chapter 47. No, no, not 47. Sarah 40. Yeah, 47. That's what I want. Sarah 47 and verse. Let's start at verse 19. You know what? Ecclesiastes. Let's, let's start at verse 18 and read down. Let's get some meat out of this bone real quick. Come on. I need you to power read. Ecclesiastes 47 verse 13. Solomon reigned in a peaceable time and was honored for God made all quiet around him that he might build a house in his name and prepare his sanctuary forever. Read. How wise was thou in thy youth, and as a flood filled with understanding. Meaning the most high blessed to King Solomon with all wisdom and all might, read, and all understanding. 
Great. Thy soul covered the whole earth, and thou fillest it with dark parables. Mm -hmm. Read on. Thy name went far unto the, the islands, and for thy peace thou wast beloved. Read. The countries marveled at thee for thy songs, and proverbs, and parables, and interpretations. Come on. By the name of the Lord God, which is called the Lord God of Israel, thou didst gather gold as tin, and didst multiply silver as lead. Now watch this. Verse 19 is the key now. Thou didst bow down thy loins unto women. Stop right there. You see that part right there? Thou, did, thou didst bow thy loins unto women. So when he bowed his loins unto women, what does that mean? He worshipped the coochie at this point. He was simple as hell at this point. You understand? Come on. Thou didst bow down thy loins unto women. Mm -hmm. And by thy body, thou was put into subjection. And by thy body, thou was brought into subjection. The coochie, the booty. The booty is what was controlling him at this point. Thou didst bow down, thou didst bow thy loins unto women. You understand? The loins. The loins talk about his rod. Okay? And then by thy body, thou was brought into subjection. Meaning what? His body was brought into subjection to the coochie. Okay? Come on. Thou didst stain thine, thy honor and pollute thy seed. You see that so part that right thou... there? It says, thou didst stain thine honor and pollute thy seed. Hmm. Look at verse 13 all the way to verse 18. The most said God blessed him with wisdom. But he had, a, he had a dumb spirit on him. What was that? What was that spirit? The coochie, the booty. That was his weakness. That was his problem. Okay, come on. Verse 20 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 47, verse 20. Thou didst stain thy honor and pollute thy seed, mm -hmm. so that thou puttest wrath upon thy children, and was grieved for thy for thy folly. And was grieved for thy folly, because when you look at Rehoboam, how did he turn out? Rehoboam was dumb as hell. Okay, now watch this. Let's go back. First Esdras, chapter 4, verse 26. First Esdras, chapter 4, verse 26. Mm-hmm. Yea, many they be which have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. That was that is what was going on at that point. Okay, come on. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. You see that thing? Many also have perished, meaning they died, have erred and sinned for women. Because in his mind, the most important thing in his life was what? Coochie. That's the, that, that, that's the motivating factor of a simp. Because King Solomon, the wisest man, he's telling you, guess what? That's exactly what happened to me. You understand? That's exactly what happened to me. So now what we're reading here is King Solomon, the wisest man, he's telling you, we remember he had a thousand women and he was counting them one by one. That's when the Lord, that's when he recovered himself when he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. That's when he recovered himself. But he's telling you all the things that he done did. Some evil and dumb decisions he made. Okay? He's telling you, don't do what I did. Okay? So now, a simp, as this does not phase a simp. We see brothers in jail. Brothers have dropped dead. They've got killed. You understand? Brothers have made dumb decisions in life. What was the motivating factor when you investigate the coochie? The coochie has always been the motivating factor. Countries have gone to war because of a woman's coochie. Mm -hmm. You understand? Read on. Not verse jump down to verse 29. Read verse 29. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. Yet did I see him and Apami, the king's concubine, the daughter of the admirable Bartikus, Sitting at the right hand of the king. So now this Apami, he says, Apami, the king's concubine. So Apami was a lesser wife. She was a lesser wife. She was the king's concubine. 
the king of Persia. Okay, come on. And taking the crown from the king's head. What did he what did he do? And taking the crown from the king's head. Because the king was consumed by this woman's coaching. It says, taking the crown from the king's head. You know how disrespectful that is? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And setting it upon her own head. And setting it upon her own head. That's why today you see some women, what they do. You brothers, you have a, a woman be leaving the house. Let's say you are in the house. The woman leaves the house. Whether it be your sister, your mother, okay? Or your wife. They leave the house. You are sitting down. They take their hand. They put it on top of your head. Mm, they be rubbing your head. They be passing. They rub your head. I'll see you later. They rub your head. Mm. You just got punked. She owns you. Okay? You just got punked. I'm telling you, stay up. Okay? Read on. That's what Apame was doing. Read. She also struck the king with her left hand. You see that thing? She smacked the king across the face. Because when the woman is rubbing her head, a hand on your head, Oh, little no, no. Oh, little no, no. That's how she looks at you. You understand? That's how she looks at you. Read on. And yet for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. You see that thing? He looked dumb as hell. He is the king. Now he says they've run out of, run out of their wits for women. He ran out of his wits for this, for this concubine. Read on. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. Stop right there. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. So she had complete dominion over this man. Meaning what? If she was happy, the king was happy. If she was upset and mad, guess what? The king also will be upset and mad. Because why? He's trying to find, figure out ways on how to put a smile on this, on this demon's face. Read. But if she took any displeasure in him, at him, the king was fain to flatter. The king was the, what? The king was fain to flatter. What do you think the king did? It says the king was fain to flatter. Meaning the king will do what? The king will set his own soul for sale. He will cast his bowels while he liveth to flatter this woman. Read on. That she might be reconciled to him again. You see that thing? That she may be happy again. Meaning a simp will go out of his way, will spend a whole lot of money, will sp spend a whole lot of time and waste all of that just for the coochie. Mm -hmm. So a, a simp will, will go overboard. That's what a simp does. A simp will go overboard. Just for the thigh. Just for the thigh. He don't care whether the thigh is rotten. He don't know. He don't care. He doesn't give a damn about none of that stuff. That's why we tell you, brothers, you understand? When you are proving, make sure that you can see the sister's medical records. And you sisters too, you must do the same. You understand? But a simp, every decision they make is not nation based. It's not about the nation. No, no, is to get his rocks off. And a simp is not like is not like um, um, Amnon. You see the character of Amnon. A simp is not like Amnon. Amnon who who will sex you and get rid of you. No, no, simp is not like that. A simp, once they get access to the coochie, now you completely own them. They are not going nowhere. That's a simp. And these women. By the way, women coming into the truth, you understand? And the women that are in the body, how do we know that none of them, they are actually are looking for a simp? You don't know. Hmm, that's a topic for another day right there. Okay, watch this. Hmm. Now, let's play some videos. You know how I, how I like to do? You know what? Before we get a video that I want to play, give me Sarak 9. Remember what we what Apame did to the king. You understand? She took the king, she drew, she took the king's crown and put it on her head and smacked the king across the face. Hmm. 
Watch this. Give me that in Sirach chapter 9. Start at verse 2. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 2. Read. Give not thy soul unto a woman mm -hmm. to set her foot upon thy substance. Because a simp, he like, this is what a simp is looking for. A simp is looking for a woman that is going to set her foot upon his substance. Meaning this woman, she will do things to him that, listen, a simp doesn't give a, he doesn't care. With a simp, it's all good. You understand? The, as long as he's got access to the coochie, that's all he cares about. It doesn't matter whether this woman is a demon. What, she, he don't care. Okay? Read. Jump down to verse 4. Verse 4. Use you know, not you much. Know, you know what? Read verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 3. Meet not with an harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. Her snares is the coochie. That's her snares. Her snares is the coochie. Her snares is the coochie and the beauty. Okay? And she's bossy. You see, a better male like women that are bossy, women that are B-I-T-C-H's, that a simp is looking for women like that. A simp goes after women that don't give them attention. A simp will go even further to get that woman's attention. They'll go overboard to get that woman's attention. And when a sister picks that thing up, guess what? They will exploit it to the fullest. Read on. Use not much the company of a woman that is a singer. Mm -hmm. Lest thou be taken with her attempts. You see that thing? The woman that is a singer, that's the woman that is what? She flatters with the tongue. You understand? Come on. Gaze not on a maid, that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. You see that thing? It says don't gaze on a maid, because a simp gazes on a maid. To gaze meaning you stare. You'll be staring at the sister. Guess what? Once a simp does that, the, the woman's beauty will hold him prisoner. Now, you, you, guess what? The sister has body bagged you. Because sister's got game. The sister got game. Go, read on. Give not thy soul unto her. No, no, read, read verse 5 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Gaze not on a maid, that thou, that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. So now he says, don't gaze upon, don't gaze on a maid. Because once you do that, guess what? Her beauty is going to hold you prisoner. Now it says that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. What are those things that are precious in her? The kuchi. Because first you are grabbed by the, you are grabbed by the beauty. Now her beauty holds you prisoner. Next part is you fall by those things that are precious in her. Even if you have not gotten access to the coochie yet, but guess what? Everything that you're going to do will be to get access to that coochie. It doesn't matter if she eats her plate of food on your head saying, don't move, nigga. Stand right there. The, the, the simp don't mind because the coochie is the motivator. Okay, read on. Give not thy soul unto harlots, mm -hmm. that, thou that thou lose not thine inheritance. He doesn't care. He'd rather lose the kingdom to get the coochie. You can't make it up. Read verse 8 now. Watch this. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. Read. And look not upon another's beauty. Another man's beauty. But the key is, it says, turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. Remember what we read in, in Proverbs 31 verse 30. It says, beauty is vain. A simp don't care about that. A, kimp is not, a simp is not sober-minded. Okay, come on. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Mm. Come on. For herewith, for herewith, love is kindled as a fire. You see that thing? For herewith, love is kindled as a fire. So this is not love, it's lust. But it says, for many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Hmm. Let's see some simps. Give me the book of Judges, 14 verse 1. This is our forefather Samson from the tribe of Dan. He became a simp for Delilah. Okay, Judges chapter 14, verse 1. 
Watch this. The book of Judges, chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in, Tim, in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now Samson is taken prisoner by the beauty of this Philistine woman, this Canaanite. Read on. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of, of the Philistines. Now therefore, get her for me to wife. You see what he's saying? Now therefore, get her for me to wife. I want that woman. Okay? Watch what the parents are saying now. Next verse. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? You see what they're asking all you? My... Is, there, is there no what? Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? Really? Or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? Mm -hmm. And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. Mm. Listen to what Samson is saying, the simp he was. He was simple as hell. So now they're asking him, you mean to tell me there's no women in Israel that you can go for them? So now, is, is look at what Samson is, he's ignoring the advice of his father. And Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. Hmm. Watch this, chapter 16, verse 1. Judges, chapter 16, verse 1. Come on. Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. You see what Samson was? Samson, he didn't care. His, dry, his motivating factor was the coochie. It says, he went to Gaza, and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. He slept with his hope. Now jump down to verse 4. Judges chapter 16, verse 4. Read. And, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, mm. whose name was Delilah. So you see what Samson was? Samson was driven by what? Coochie. That is what was driving Samson. You understand? Read. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him. What did they and say? See, entice him. Entice him. Entice this man. Delilah. Mm. Samson was captured by Delilah. Okay? It says, Entice him. These are the Philistines now. That, listen, entice him. Okay, come on. Entice him and see wherein. His great strength lies. That's the key right there. And see where in his great strength lies. Because guess what? How, how is she going to entice him? She's, we're going to explain it. But when she entices him, she's going to discover where his power is. What is his power? Where his strength is. Meaning what? In today, because we don't have that physical powers like you know our forefathers had back then. The power today is what? Your honor. You keep the commandments, you observe the laws, you make sure that you stay in the scriptures no matter what, stay in the Bible. That's your strength. The Lord is our strength when we keep his commandments. You understand? So now, when she discovers, she discovered that his weakness was the coaching. That was his problem. So Delilah exploited that thing and she knew how to work her thing. She knew how to work her stuff. Watch this. Jump down to verse 19. Judges chapter 16, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And she made him sleep upon her knees. She did what? And she, and she made him sleep upon her knees. She, Delilah, made Samson sleep upon her knees. What that mean? What that mean? They were getting it on. Watch this. Because she knows how to work her stuff. Remember, they said, entice him. How? What other ways is, is she going to do it? We are reading about it right here. Verse 19 again. Judges chapter 16, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And when Delilah saw, no, and she made him to sleep upon his knees, really? upon her knees, 
and she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him you see that thing right there so she sexed him she knew how to to how to control the mind of samson with her coochie because samson was controlled by that thing you understand it says and she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his hair because that was the strength and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him guess what the way the woman she's going to afflict you she's going to eat a plate of food upon your head because she knows now now she has full control over you you can't say nothing because all she has to do is to do what all she has to do is to deprive you for one night you're going to think like listen the world is coming to an end you're going to be begging you're going to beg that's that's a simp okay watch this now let's play some videos i'm almost done let's play some videos here what is a simp a quick google search leads us to this definition a man that puts himself in a subservient or submissive position under a woman in hopes of winning them over without the female bringing anything to the table. While this is true, I want to go deeper. How does a simp think? How do they act? What breeds a simp? What life experiences could ultimately belittle a man to the lowly status of a simp? These are questions I hope to answer in this video. So what differentiates a normal person from a simp? You see, a normal person usually has multiple goals and things he aspires for in life. While a normal guy may want some pussy, he has other things in his life that he strives for. A simp's only goal is pussy. A simp may convince himself that he has other goals, but his desire for female companionship is so great his other goals are pretty much useless in the presence of this simp desire. A normal person might actually deny pussy because he has other things to look forward to in his life. A simp will never deny pussy. A simp will drop everything in his life for it. The sad part is that his overbearingness will actually scare off off the girl that was initially attracted to the simp. They don't understand that girls can see the desperation for coochie in their pupils. The simp might not say it outright, but his actions, degrading body language, and clinginess scream, can I please have coochie? You think a woman would be attracted to a man that looks at her simple companionship like a gift from God? A simp is like a starving lion decrepit and weak, but as soon as it sees meat or possibilities of female companionship, he exerts all his energy in order to grab the prey. The lion will often fail because of how weak he has become from lack of food. It's the same for the simp. His lack of confidence and social awareness makes him too weak to grab any prey. The thought of Coochie consumes a simp. Day and night, it runs through the back of his mind. Simps also create an environment that breeds even more simps. Think about all the girls who have inflated egos because of horny simps. I've seen some bitches that look like the human equivalent of Jinx. Simps. Think about all the girls who have inflated egos because of horny simps. I've seen some bitches that look like the human equivalent of Jinx act like they are goddesses because simps have given them a false sense of reality. If you are a woman and you give a simp just the slightest bit of attention, he will make you feel like the most beautiful woman on earth. Too much simtry can often increase the standards of these women that simps are chasing, which in turn makes it harder for the simp to achieve his ultimate goal. The sad part is is the longer it takes for a simp to reach his goal, the more simp he becomes. This desperation for pussy clouds a, a simp's judgment. His desire for this one thing makes him lose all sense of logic and social awareness. Here, let me give you an example. 
Let's say by some miracle, the simp gets a girl to go on a date with him. Maybe she's on a date with him because she's broken and has no self-worth, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is all theoretical. The simp wants her to be his girlfriend so bad that he skips all the steps to make that happen. You see that thing? That's a simp. A simp doesn't prove a system. Mm -mm. Instead of feeling things out, looking for signs, and escalating things slowly, the simp might express his undying love for her before they even say hi. The simp will skip steps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and go straight to step 100. A simp's brain takes leaps in the hope that the simp will reach his ultimate goal faster. This twisted brain also makes it impossible for the simp to see a woman for what she is. The simp's thought process is so filled with thirsty- A simp is a thirsty brother. I hate being alone. Coochie will fix my problem. That's a simp. He thoughts that there is no room for a simp to see a woman's flaws. You can be mentally unhealthy, stupid. Maybe you poop your pants every night. As long as you appear somewhat fuckable to the simp, you are his destined love. A simp belittles himself so much that he will bend over backwards for any human companionship. It can be human companionship with someone with no redeeming qualities. You know what that the means simp. When it says with somebody with no redeeming qualities. Meaning what you give in, you don't get back, okay? Doesn't care. He will ignore everything for his quote-unquote love. What may appear to us as a normal, somewhat unimpressive girl is the most beautiful and intelligent goddess to a simp. A simp is willing to place any girl far above himself because of his microscopic self-worth. This applies to the opposite gender too. Trust me, there are a lot of female simps out there. The only reason why this video is male-centric is because people usually refer to men when it comes to the simp meme. And since this is a simp-centric video, I cannot deviate from the meme. Also, if you've ever seen a codependent relationship where both of the partners excessively rely on each other for their identity and value, then that's just two simps in a relationship together. It's, not, it's not one of them. You better prove the system. Don't be a simp. Okay? Imagine two simps. What type of baby they want to come up? Simplicity, see, that's what will come up. Not one of them is a simp. They're both simps. That's why they're like that. Let me get back on topic. If you still don't understand, let me lay out some examples of simp activity. Spending unbelievably long amounts of time with a girl in the hopes of getting action despite the obvious lack of mutual attraction. Expressing your feelings to a woman you have only seen once. Crying yourself to sleep over the girl who complimented your hair three years ago. Waiting on a girl who's in a relationship like her pussy is the equivalent of the Walmart self-checkout machine you have to wait in a line for. Masturbating to the same girl's Insta machine you have to wait in a line for. Masturbating to the same girl's Instagram pictures every night with the same ritualistic intent of a devout Muslim. Um, during his five daily prayers, religiously watching Jordan Peterson lectures in the hopes that it will help you understand why you're not getting any pussy. Publicly tweeting, masturbating in the shower sometimes makes the pain go away. These are all things simps do. The tragedy of the, the simp is that he thinks the reason he's not getting pussy is that he's not simping hard enough. I cry for the tormented souls that think they're not simping hard enough. The girl gets more distance, so they simp even harder, ultimately becoming an even bigger simp than they were before. This is an endless cycle of pain that only escalates the simp's suffering. For example, after a simp gets rejected, he may think the reason she rejected him was because he didn't put enough effort. 
he will then start simping even harder in the hopes that it will lead him to success, but it only makes things worse. This is why I call it the tragedy of the simp. This cycle of rejection that leads to simping, more simping, even more simping. Brother? Hmm. To even more simp may seem like it's endless, but simps are not eternal. There is a term I like to use called the awakened simp. This is the state of being a simp achieves when he realizes his wrongdoings. This state comes after the simp has endured too much self-inflicted pain. The pain of wanting coochie more than anyone else but never getting it. This is when a simp realizes that he needs to work on himself before he works on pussy. This is when a simp starts working on increasing his self-worth and confidence so he doesn't belittle himself to chasing uninterested women. This is also when the simp doesn't try as hard, which ironically actually gets him more pussy. So what life experiences can turn a man into a simp? Here are some examples. Lack of female attention. Growing up with parents that belittle you. Simps often simp because... Because they feel worthless. That's why a healthy family environment is necessary for breeding chads. A bad breakup can also turn a healthy individual into a simp. This is first because... The man will focus all his simp energy onto one girl. This makes it extremely hard for the simp to ever move on to other women. At least other simps are flexible. This type of simp clings so hard to one person that it makes him ignore all coochie opportunities. Now you might be asking, Juice Man, how do you know the simp? I'm not gonna lie guys, I used to be a simp. It all started when my third grade girlfriend dumped me for a chad with a blue eyes white dragon. I know it's been an inconvenience. Not at all, Tom. You take as much time as you need. We gotta do what it is. I got an idea. Whoa, wait, look at it. Hey, you see how it's simply Tom, get down here. Brothers, are you watching this? Oh, what's going on, guys? Mr. Dubois. It's an intervention. An intervention? Your friends uh, have reason to believe that you are suffering from chronic bitch dependency, Mr. Dubois. Your friends uh, have reason to believe that you are suffering from chronic bitch dependency. An intervention? Your friends uh, have reason to believe that you are so suffering now, from chronic bitch dependency, Mr. Dubois. May I call you, Tom? Is this some kind of joke? But the people, the people, the people, the people, the people, the sim is the pimp and the lady. Just now, uh, and we'll finish everything. You see, I just need to walk. I uh, need to sleep outside. Right? Hey, what's going on in the yeah. background? Wait, wait, wait! I need to put somebody on mute. I can't hear nothing. Okay, so a sim, when an intervention comes in, the intervention in this case is what the scriptures when they come in. A sim don't see it like that. A sim sees correction and counsel as an attack. You understand that? That's a sim. Tom, bitch dependency is no laughing matter. It's not a laughing matter. <laughs> Addiction to a bitch can fuck with your friends. Your Addiction to a thigh, a coochie, 
Let me mess up everything about you. Okay, we'll stay in your honor. Okay. Health and scary enough, even your money. It's a disease, don't huh? wait. What was your name again? Well, thank you for asking. My name is a pimp named Slickback. Wait, a pimp? Named Slickback, yes. Please say the whole thing, if you would. Yes, that includes the a pimp named part. Yes, Tom, every time. Look, Mr. A pimp named Slickback. No need for the mister. I, I don't think I need any help from <laughs> someone like you. you. You see the way that, that, that this slim Tom is responding? I don't think I need help from somebody like you. Let's translate it in the truth, because Israel is slow. Who are you? What is the Israel? This is how they translate it. Who are you gonna tell me? You're not the prophet of the Lord. You understand? I don't see you as fathers over me. I don't see you as mm -hmm. you're not the men of the most high. I just see you as niggas. Niggas with Bible. To hell with you. When the scriptures come out, that's how a simp thinks. Okay? A simp. Don't take correction. A simp. Everything is an attack because a simp. Is a woman. And by <laughs> someone like me, you mean a pimp? A bad guy? Huh? Look, I'm not trying to insult you. I just don't approve of what you people mm, do to mm, women. Mm, mm, mm. You see that thing? Listen to the speech. What you people do to women isn't the same thing that's going on today. Because guess what? In 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 as the scriptures come out, you know, whenever we get on the women as simp. He be mad at the leadership. Why is he talking to the women like this? Why is he bringing that scripture out? Why is he bringing this scripture out? That's how a sin thing. When we correct the sisters, when we get on the sisters, because the cousins come out, when we get on the sisters, a sin, he wants to what? He wants to protect. A sin wants to stop us from bringing the truth out. That's a sin. So I'm wrong. So I'm messed up. Well, which one of us is the one missing a bitch, Tom? You don't see me running around looking for a bitch. I know where all of my bitches are. Thank you very much. Bitch, where you at? I'm out here getting your money. That's what the hell I thought. Thank you, Grandma. Now look at you, bitchless. Sans beach, as the French in France would say. I've had enough. I'm going back upstairs. Tom! Tom! When we first let you stay here, we thought it was only going to be temporary. But damn, Tom, I just don't see any end in sight. It's only been two days. Take a hush. You're living under my roof now. If you stay here, you're going to get some help. You know what? I know a great therapist. I'll make an appointment today. That also would have been a good idea, but we've already paid Mr. A Pimp Name Slickback a retainer of $2,500. Robert, you shouldn't have. Hold With on. your credit card. You see, you see how it's the same thing? He's got a credit card that he could have just went to a hotel and paid. He was kicked out of the house by the woman. Now, he doesn't even have the common sense to say, wait a minute, I've got money. I can go to a hotel and book a hotel. But you see what, what is there? This is how a simp thinks. A simp doesn't have common sense. You understand? part one the first characteristic of a simp okay he's motivated and driven by coochie and beauty and nothing else you can't tell him nothing that's a simp that's the first characteristic of a simp okay let's break bread first corinthians 11 verse 26 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same man also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. 
but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.